So, Joel, what exciting news do you have for us tonight? Uh, we're looking at the third and final sensor that we've picked for our Fonny project. This one is a Sharp Infrared Ranger. That's both called by Sharp. This particular one is uh, good for about 30, I think it's about 20 centimeters, up to about 1.8 meters. Uh, we haven't been able to get anything past about 1.5 meters in terms of accuracy, but sitting on the table here, what, what the way the way this particular sensor works is that, um, well again, like the uh, ultrasonic sensor, you give it power, this particular one takes 5 volts power, and it is, actually isn't driven by anything, it's self-driven, it's all self-contained, all it does is it outputs an analog voltage. Uh, at the moment, I've got 0 0.82 volts on the, uh, on the output there. So, uh, let's explain this setup though, okay? So basically what we've got is we've got this sensor set up so it actually sends a beam actually along the table. We've actually calibrated it using, um, you can't see it there, um, but uh, it actually sends an infrared beam out and basically it's hitting that wall down the other side, which is what, 1.3 metres? Yeah, 1.33 metres, of course, with the uh, Aldi cheapo measuring device that we have here. Thanks, Aldi. Actually, God bless Aldi's soul. The guy just died yesterday. Did he? Yeah. Actually, on Saturday, it doesn't matter. Okay, so, uh, it's been calibrated with this sensor, so it's actually set up on this table so we can actually run some tests on it. Yep. Yeah? Um, now, the crow output is actually quite interesting. It's got a, it's got a, it's got a one kilohertz cycle. Um, what I've done here is I've got two crow probes reading off the same, same response. Um, one's, the difference between these two is this one here is uh, DC coupled and this one here is AC coupled so that when the voltage go up this particular signal here won't move around much mm. so, which enables us to give us a trigger so if I happen to put something in front of it the top one goes up and the bottom one holds steady nice one so that was the point of that uh, it enables us to get consistent measurements because we were trying it off with just the one one channel and it just wasn't working mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure what's so unique about this particular this particular wave shape but um, it's 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 been present it's been present the whole time and it's the only thing we can really get it to trigger off um, there there is no interaction with the HC 12 for this particular exercise as I said uh, it's not required to have any additional inputs into the sensor itself. It's all self-sufficient. It just outputs a voltage relative to what it measures. Okay. So let's do some tests on this. Um, do you want to grab that book there? Sure. And um, what I'll do is let's have it so you actually start at the other end of the table and I'll have it so we can actually view the multimeter and just where the book's sitting. Okay. So it's currently sitting at uh, 0.8283 of a volt, and that's without you moving it. So if you want to start moving it towards the um, the infrared sensor, so you've probably moved about 10 centimeters, yeah? 20. 20 centimeters, and as you can see, it's at 1.01, 1.02 1 volts currently. So if you'd like to keep on moving it towards the sensor. So it's about 50 centimeters from the edge of the table. Yeah. About 80 centimetres to the... Oh, yeah, about 80 centimetres to the, to the sensor. Just moving closer there. And the good thing... The, the interesting thing about this particular sensor, because of the optics, if I keep on going closer to it, it actually goes backwards. And the reason that is, uh, is because the optic sensor on here, it picks up... It's very similar to the LPDA in which way it picks up. Um, but... The um, because it basically it's cap when it when it's when you got this in here, it's capturing the part of the reflection and it's reflecting back here. So the voltage comes up and then it tapers off depending on the intensity that it captures. I'm not exactly sure how how it it captures the um, the light whether it's uh, where it depends on obviously the the lux of the light or does it on a photodiorase a linear photodiode array like the other one we've got with the laser, but it, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting the way it works, and the way that it tapers off. 
So do you think maybe we should actually set up with a tape measure to actually get some more precise values off the voltage or basically this is just good to actually show some testing of the device and how it works? Yeah, it's good to see that, that it can work. Um, as described by Peter, it, um, they're, they're pretty interesting the way they work out. The accuracy, uh, it's, not, it's not too bad. You get a bit of an angle on it and it's going to vary the output. Okay, well how about we test some um, angles. So what I'll do is I'll get you to put it um, that, just, just mount it somewhere. Don't, not all the way, halfway down the table, I guess. Okay, so if you mount it halfway down the table and it's uh, perpendicular to the table, we can see it's sitting at 1.52 volts and varying by 0 0.01 plus minus. Okay, so Joel, if you want to start angling it, angle it towards the towards the infrared. Sure, top towards the center. Yeah, why not? Well, is there much of a change there? Mm, oh, it's starting to drop only just there, where you are almost basically beyond 40 degrees. Yeah, I'd say about that. I'd say I'm looking at about... Uh, but it hasn't... Not much variance, though. Mm, I keep going. Yeah. But then again, it's quite a, it's quite a rough surface, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to pick it up off either way. But if I come back this way, you might have a different story. Yeah, look at that. For sure. Maybe because it's actually... Oh. So I'm coming back up. Oh wait, so that's the starting point. So mount it perpendicular and then start again. Okay. Okay, that's, so it's point, uh, uh, 1.60. And that's changing. It's dropping dramatically actually. Yeah. Okay, that's quite interesting. Well Joel, how about I give you a, a shiny textbook such as this one here. Um, and let's just see what happens with this book here. Um, it does have a shiny surface on it. Um, as you can see, the reflection of the light is uh, hitting. Anyway, uh, Joel, let's do that experiment again. If you want to start at um, perpendicular. Okay, about the same point again. Uh, if you just wait two guys, we're going to make sure... Okay, okay, we can see everything. Okay, so we're seeing it... Oh, jeez, it's really struggling to stay stable, actually. No, oh, actually, yeah. Uh, mm. It's jumping quite a bit without you moving anything. Yeah, I can see it moving around a little bit on the crow. What's the bumping around it? It's 1.62 through to about 1. Oh, it's even dropped lower than that. It's down 1.5 up to 1.8. Okay. 1.8 plus. I, am, I, I, I don't have it 100% steady. I'm moving it a little bit. Yeah, but even still. Okay, well, let's start giving it an angle, okay? Let's start uh, opening it up. Right, actually, let's narrow it first. Let's um, bring it towards me. Okay, so uh, it's actually sitting steady now. That's actually quite interesting. But mind you, now it's starting to drop. Same as the last time, about 40 degrees onwards. I have, I have a feeling that the light is probably bouncing off here, then bouncing back off the table again. Which is what I thought was actually happening with the matte surface book also. Didn't it do the same thing, but actually open it up? Uh, Start, it starting in perpendicular? Uh, no, as in like rolling it back, like you were. Yep. Okay, so start perpendicular, yep. and then start pulling it back. Yeah, okay, cool. Excellent. Thanks, mate. Um, and the reason we didn't do these angle tests on the other one is because we knew that the ultrasonic one was very dependent on of the angle, but the when we tested the uh, linear photo diode, it seemed to be seemed to, seemed to react really well to good angles. Like you could put a fair whack of angle on it, and it would mm. still read quite accurately. Yeah. Like there wasn't much discrepancy in where it was because it was, it was picking up the position of where 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 it is. It's picking up the light source. That's right. Where the energy was coming from. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add about this? And how, 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 what's your feelings actually, Joel, in, um, in regards uh, to this device? And do you think it's actually going to aid us or, um, or, or be a be a down? Yeah, exactly. I, I personally, I'd like to see. I mean, I could use two of that. We could use two of these sensors. Uh, one one a shorter one and one a longer one. In parallel. Uh, yeah, two of them in parallel, and that and you could you could use that in replacement of the LPDA if you wish. Would they interfere with each other? Uh, if you have them facing the same direction, they may. Mm -hmm. But if you give them a bit of separation, I think you could probably get away with it. Okay. Probably get away yep. With it. How would they work with the LPDA? 
uh, in phase. Uh, we haven't tested if the, if the laser will react to it anyway, but if I stick something here uh, and, uh, and I bounce a laser off it, it's, you're going to get the reflection off it anyway. I don't know if it's going to be any stronger or any lighter. Yeah, okay. Um, that's something we have to consider. Yeah. But we're trying to we're trying to keep um, the sensors uh, at, at operating at different angles so they don't interfere with each other. Mm -hmm. The only two that we could really put together in the same in the same flat plane of field is is either ultrasonic and the laser or the LPDA because mm -hmm. it obviously won't react with the other device. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Thanks, Joel. Sorry, um, we weren't humorous. It's a bit dry. Yeah. <laughs> bit of a sober moment for us. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not, I'm not drunk anymore. <laughs> I don't think we were at any stage, so that's a sad thing. Uh, and it's associated with engineering and study. Hmm. Okay, thanks. Cheers.